Welcome back to Main Street Living. We are getting our chef hats on now. And guys, I think one thing I would love to do in the new year is learn to be a better cook. Yeah, uh, I don't know if people really remember, but I, I had a brownie segment earlier this year. So I've started baking in, in a lot. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, well, y'all remember that. Don't act like you were surprised. I didn't yeah, get it. I would, I would also like Cheryl to get better at cooking. That would, that's fine. <laughs> Yeah, well, well, you live across the country, you wouldn't benefit. <laughs> well, the one thing is for sure is this has definitely been the year so for so many of us to become cooks. Uh, like it or not, it's exactly the space that our next guest fills. Uh, he's got a cooking show for the rest of us demonstrating how to make food that's big in taste and small in effort. So please welcome Sam, the cooking guy, to the show. Welcome, Sam. Good morning. Thanks, guys. I appreciate the uh, nice introduction. <laughs> well, no problem. You wrote it for me to say, so I had to say it. <laughs> well, no, but the rest of us part. I mean, you know, uh, you said in the some one of you guys said in the beginning, let's get our chef hats on. And I take a little exception to that because I think that's the kind of terminology that can actually throw people. Yeah. Um, you know, a chef to me is classically trained, culinary school education, restaurants under their belt, that kind of stuff. And that um, is is out of touch, out of reach for most people. I think most people just want to eat well. They don't want to take forever. And that's the little niche I think I've forced myself into. I make food that is fully accessible. A lot of the stuff that I make, I think most people may already have most of the ingredients in their pantry, in their fridge, in the kitchen. I'm not trying to change the world. I'm just trying to make food that's great, that people can go, oh, holy crap, I can actually make this, and I didn't think I could. But right. Sam, Sam, like, there's so many uh, cooking chefs on TV, so how did you actually yeah. get started as the cooking guy? You know, uh, this is a perfect question for a four-hour interview show, Gracie, <laughs> but I will, I will, I'll shorten it down to tell you that I had an idea about a travel show. I was the director of operations at a biotech company at the time. And I had an idea about a travel show. Really, everything was predicated on me just wanting to be happy in my career. I always talk about this. We spend an enormous chunk of our lives working and you better like it or it's going to be miserable. And I was miserable. And I had taken a trip to Tokyo with my brother-in-law. Uh, during the day, he was at a conference. During the day, I was uh, by myself wandering the streets of Tokyo. And, um, and I loved it. It made a huge impression on me. And, and one day I had this idea, what if I started a travel show that encouraged people, that told people uh, that they could go to places that they thought were complicated? Like Tokyo, you can't read, I mean, unless you're Japanese or know the language, you can't read the signs, you don't understand, the food's going to be foreign. Don't stay away from that. Go to places like that. Don't mm -hmm. go to North Dakota again this summer. No offense to North Dakota, but we get in these routines. You can do this. So I quit my job. And before I got a chance to go shoot anything over there for a demo, 9-11 happened. Mm -hmm. And I always say that that day changed thousands of other people's lives much more significantly than mine. But it still changed my life because I couldn't shoot any travel stuff. I didn't, I'd never been on TV. Nobody was buying travel shows in the days following 9-11. I couldn't go back to the biotech company. And so I sat at home watching TV came across a really horrible cooking segment in a local channel. And that made me say, okay. that is so <laughs> bad. Somebody should do that better. And then there's the light bulb and I went, wait, I could do that better. And, and I did, I got the crew, we shot a demo and you know, and all the time my wife is going, I think this is a brilliant idea, sweetheart. Just one thing, I go, what? She goes, you just can't cook. I go, well, see, oh, no. here's the important part, honey. Details. Uh, I will, I will be my own weakest link. The point being, when you watch chefs on TV, all you do is get hungry and then you go out because you can never make the food. Mm -hmm. I wanted people to watch and think they could make it. So if I can make it, anybody can make it. Nice, nice. And that was it. We shot a demo, we sent it out. It ended up being on a local station a couple times a week. Then it became a half hour show. Then Discovery Health came along. Wow. I had a series there called Just Cook This with Sam the Cooking Guy. <laughs> and a publisher came along, uh, bought my first three cookbooks. My fourth cookbook just came out. And nice. YouTube happened about s seven years ago. 
but nobody really paid any attention to it until two years ago. Uh, in, in May of 2018, we had 30,000 subscribers. Wow. May of 2018, 30,000 subscribers, which is still a good number. Uh, August of 19, we hit a million subscribers. Wow. August, wow. August Huge. of 20, August of 20, a few months ago, we've hit 2 million subscribers. We're now at two and a half million. And I think it's oh a God. testimony, not so much for my charming personality, quick wit, good looks <laughs> and all that. I yeah. think what it is, humility. is it's the, the yeah. humility, thank you, of course, yeah. the ease of the stuff that I do, but people wanting a, a dying for, yearning for someone to say, you can make this. Mm -hmm. Other people are making it much more difficult than it needs to be. I right. am not classically trained. I've never gone to culinary school. And for me, it was logical that if I burnt myself or cut myself or dropped something, we wouldn't hide it. We would leave it in the episodes. You're real. And yeah. So I'm real. And that you're and relatable. People will, come up, people will come up and they'll say, you make me feel like I can cook. Mm -hmm. I'll oh, say, you know, you always nice. could cook. You always could. You just were thrown off by complicated um, stuff that you saw other cooks, chefs Cooking doing. Cooking jargon. TV. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I which love, I hate. I know. And I love, I love that you go by the cooking guy, not the chef, right? Like, no chef's hat. We're the cooking guy here. And I also love that uh, big in taste, small in effort, because that's, that's been said about me as well. So I'm glad that, that that's what you go for. <laughs> um, I, I like yeah. that. Look, it was a very conscious decision not to use the term chef because I wasn't a chef. Right. And and th while there's no test to call yourself a chef, like being a doctor or a lawyer, for me, it was an earned title from culinary school or, or a lot of restaurant experience, neither of which I had. I was just a guy that cooked and that worked. Right. And you do so a you lot. Mentioned yeah, well, I want Cheryl. Do you mind? I was going to ask about the YouTube channel. What kind of content yeah. do people find on the YouTube channel that got you millions and millions of subscribers? Uh, look, I'll tell you this: it's all easy. Um, there's no foie gras. There's no uh, white French expensive truffles. It's um, sandwiches, and and we grill a lot. I mean, most of it is shot outside, which mm -hmm. doesn't mean it's all uh, like barbecue. I have a smoker. I have an amazing big wide uh, Evo grill. It's a 30 inch round, essentially like a cast iron pan turned upside down. I use my, my, my grill as an oven and people forget about this. I, I say that a barbecue is just a really can be used as an oven. It's just outside and people forget that you can put a pot on the grill with butter in it and, um, and uh, poach, uh, you know, shrimp if you want it. Uh, mm -hmm. You warm up a soup. Anything you can do inside, you really can do outside. So 80% uh, of our YouTube audience are guys. So hmm. clearly wow. I'm doing a food that appeals to guys, but not just Cooking for guys. them, for their, yeah. for their spouses, for their partners, for their wives. Right. People, guys that are learning how to cook. And I think in me, they found someone that, is encouraging enough, stupid enough, dumb enough, makes <laughs> enough mistakes that make them feel like it's okay. I've dropped ribs before on the ground. Who and hasn't? Them up and, look, and looked at the can. But see, that's the thing. Yeah. A cooking channel would never show that part. They would no. pretend it didn't happen. But is but it I'll the, the, the three-second rule? Do you eat it? <laughs> sure. well, I've generally referred to as five seconds, sometimes stretched to 35-second rule. <laughs> Depending on what it's landed on. If it's just yeah. Cheryl, is that cement. how you eat your ribs? Is that how you eat your ribs? <laughs> oh, we all know I'm a gluten free vegan, so we're not going to go there. <laughs> no. Okay, any recipes but, for but, that? Uh, for gluten free vegans? Yeah. Oh, wow. Ooh, she can grill some veggies, right? You can do yeah. that. Some Look, tofu, I'm a, you know. Uh, I'm a huge tofu fan. We yeah. have, uh, I have a couple oh, okay. restaurants. One of them is called Not Not Tacos, and we have a veggie tofu taco you, you couldn't eat the tortilla wow. sorry but you could have it in a in a, a, a lettuce corn. leaf or corn it's tortilla. It's vegan. Yeah. We, we don't use corn tortillas sorry oh never mind okay well there so you I go get, I, yeah, I, can, I can do a bowl time, but, but mine are not mexican inspired tortillas and a corn tortilla tastes like mexican tacos to me so we use flour tortillas there's lard you wouldn't want any part of my tortilla 
I'm just saying, <laughs> the vegetable <laughs> with quickly stir fried tofu is amazing. I'm a huge tofu fan. I love to grill tofu with Asian sauces and spices and stuff on it. The Ooh, grill. It gets you know, those it gets those marks on it. It's incredible. Yes. Yeah. And speaking of, of Asian food, you mentioned at the beginning yeah. Tokyo and loving travel. And, and that really yeah, stuck yeah. with me because I love to travel and I know it's different yes. during COVID, yeah. but there's so many different flavors. One of my favorites actually is Ethiopian food. I love all the spices. And what are some of the other reasons why you love to travel when it's not a pandemic and, and try the different cuisine everywhere? Well, I, look, I think it's fun um, for the channel. The po what we do is we're always thinking about what people will want to watch, what they would like to see, what they'd like to learn about. So when we go, we've done, um, you know, top 10 things to eat in London, top 10 things to eat in uh, Tokyo. Um, and that's not not top 10 restaurants. It's if you're going to go to those countries, these are the things that you should be having. It's fun, it's interesting. People like the travel part. We love to travel. We like to try those things. And also you get to eat those things and then come home and turn some of what you've learned into what you're making for yourself. And I tell people all the time, a trip to an Asian market, and I don't mean single Asian, you know, we have stores in San Diego as you guys have wherever everybody else is that have Chinese and Vietnamese and, and uh, Japanese and, and Thai all, you know, together. A handful of those different condiments, anybody's, other people's condiments, literally can transform your regular everyday food like that. Mm. A couple bottles on the door of your fridge change things so drastically. We just get in this habit of if it's Friday, we're going to make Aunt Ruth's chicken. And that's fine. And I'm sure Aunt Ruth's chicken is delicious. But every Friday... <laughs> that means you're going to have that 52 times in 2021. <laughs> Come on, that's insane. You've got to change it up a bit. You're going to eat the same things the whole year. No, don't do that. You shouldn't do that. Uh, my newest cookbook is called Recipes with Intentional Leftovers. There's 19 master recipes, how to make a brisket, how to make a great chili, how to make a quick bread, even silly things like how to make perfect steamed rice or hard boiled eggs. So the eggs don't have that gray ring around the yolk. But after we show you those master recipes, there's five or six things, recipes on what to turn that main ingredient into. So you don't have mm. to eat roast chicken like roast chicken every time. You can turn it into taquitos or a chicken wonton soup or a braided mm -hmm. pizza. Uh, turn the rice into a really delicious fried rice. Turn the, the hard boiled eggs into curried egg salad or amazing avocado egg toast, that kind of stuff. You can, you, sometimes I think people just need a little kick in the butt, a little kick in the food inspiration part of their thinking. And I want to be the guy to try and bring that and help people get that. Well, you've definitely brought that. Um, I know that you've inspired me to allow my wife mm -hmm. to eat more than I, like, I don't like to have a bunch of leftovers. I like to just eat just enough at that moment. Uh, but you also have three restaurants, right? So yeah, yeah. yeah. So during the pandemic, like, like how has it, you know, slowed down the restaurant business for you? It's, uh, it's, it's absolutely slowed them down. You know, we are, we are in the same boat as all our other restaurant friends and family members here in San Diego and across the country. We've, we've had to furlough, I mean, roughly not 90 plus percent of our staff, which wow. is miserable. It's the worst thing to do. I, my heart breaks for restaurants in New York. I mean, yeah. right now it's a snowstorm. What it, what possibly could they be doing? They cannot exist yeah. on takeout. They really yeah. can't. Mm -hmm. It's that's just so not hard. happening. Yeah, that's so hard. Yeah. People rely on the tips as well. And a lot of people don't tip when they're doing takeout. But you got to remember no. that. And, so, so. and I've been saying, look, if you, if you have favorite restaurants, now's the time to go and say this. I'd like to order a pizza. I'd like to order lasagna. But order two of them. Take that extra mm -hmm. lasagna. I know, Quincy, you said you don't want leftovers. I don't really understand that. You need to get a change in your thinking, my friend. Yes. But I'm a minimalist. I've been told. Take that. So, you know, so am I. But that doesn't mean that extra lasagna can't be properly wrapped, go into the freezer, 
And then a week from now, oh, yes. you bring it out and turn it into something. Or right? Quince, you love you love helping less fortunate or the homeless or things like that. There like you go. hit your man, hit your man on the way out of the store with an extra lasagna. Yes. Yeah, you know that's what? exactly right. I'll do that. Thank you. You all yeah. have inspired me to give well, you know a what? great idea. <laughs> or you do this, or you say to one of your friends, I'm going to, you know, uh, Larry's Italian restaurant. I'm going to get a lasagna. Does anybody want one? Let's put in a big order. We'll leave a, a big fat tip for them. Yeah. It's yeah. this, these little things, gift cards, that kind of stuff are so important right now. I cannot tell gift you, cards, but yeah. don't think you can't put a, a few slices of pizza in the freezer or extra lasagna in the freezer or, you know, cook an extra chicken and then use that to make chicken soup and then freeze that stuff. That's right. what freezers are for. For goodness sake. Absolutely. Say. Very Preserve good food. advice. And thank Sam, you, you've you. been so wonderful to talk with today. You're, you're amazing. Obviously, you have a lot of followers there. And and thank you for spending some time with us here on Main Street Living. Oh, my pleasure. I love spreading the word. People can cook. They just don't know it. Ah. Yep. You don't need to be a chef. You just need to be a cooking guy. <laughs> That's exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you can and find Sam at thecookingguy.com. <laughs> thank you again. So much, Sam. Yeah, thanks, you guys. You bet. Happy holidays. All right, you too. You too. All right, stick with us right here on Main Street Living because we are going to talk about how you can safely visit California parks.